Hey there everybody, Henry here. Today we're going to go over the arterial systems of the upper extremities. I'm going to begin by going over the anatomy, followed by the protocols. This will be a primer for beginners and also a review for experienced stenographers. We're going to begin the anatomy with the aortic arch, scanning through the suprasternal notch. Here you see the arch with three vessels which is the most common configuration of the aortic arch. The first one is the brachiocephalic artery, also known as the inanimate artery, which then ascends to bifurcate into the right common carotid artery and the right subclavian artery. Then we have the left common carotid artery, which goes up into the neck and the left subclavian artery. This vessel right here is the left brachiocephalic vein. Here is a zoomed up view. Brachiocephalic artery or inanimate artery, which bifurcates into right common carotid artery, and right subclavian artery, left common carotid artery, and left subclavian artery. Here's your carotid artery in the neck and transverse, bordered by the thyroid medially and the internal jugular vein anterolaterally. This is the same artery in sagittal. We see a very clean vessel. We see clearly the arterial layers of the arterial wall. Here we have a longitudinal image of the subclavian artery. If you follow the subclavian artery in the chest proximally, then turning the probe longitudinally, you can see the origin of the vertebral artery. This is the axillary artery in transverse. Then we have the axillary artery in sagittal, followed by the brachial artery in transverse. Normally, you'll see two smaller vessels on either side. Those are the brachial veins. They are easily compressible. Brachial artery in sagittal. Then you have the radial artery in the forearm on the lateral side in the anatomical position. Transverse, then sagittal. Then we have the ulnar artery which is medial in the anatomic position, then the ulnar artery and sagittal. Now onto the upper arterial protocol. Most places have slightly different protocols. However, a common place to start is the subclavian artery. An ordering physician will indicate whether they want you to include palmar or other arteries like the carotid or inanimate. So beginning with the subclavian artery, you want to take transverse and sagittal images with and without color. Here is a sagittal image without color, then one with color, then one with color and spectral doppler. This artery has a nice triphasic waveform. Further down in the arm, the arteries may exhibit monophasic waveforms depending on the hemodynamic needs at rest. The lower extremity arteries are typically triphasic all the way down in a normal exam. So here you have the axillary artery. You want to take transverse images with and without color. Longitudinal images with and without color. Here's the axillary artery with color, then with spectral doppler. Moving on down, you'll encounter the brachial artery. Take images in transverse with and without color sagittal with and without color, and then spectral doppler. This subject was fidgeting their fingers during the exam, resulting in the forearm muscles requiring more blood, which caused a monophasic or low resistance waveform. Moving on down, you encounter the radial artery. Begin with the radial artery in transverse with and without color, sagittal with and without color, then spectral doppler. Followed by the ulnar artery, transverse with and without color, sagittal with and without color, and spectral doppler. And that is your basic upper extremity arterial protocol. This exam can be performed unilateral or bilaterally. In the next video, I will be going over the lower extremity.